you know, you didn't have a choice to not be afraid to fail because you had to go to that bank robbery and arrest that guy. You just, you had to do that. That was your job. So I left police force after completing 21 years of service. So essentially I retired nine years early. It's not over when you fail, it's over when you quit. So don't quit. <clears throat> Welcome to the Adriana Stefanko podcast. I'm here with a friend, Adrian Pinozo. We've actually known each other for a couple of years now. We met out at a retreat. Uh, he was a speaker in one of the masterminds I was part of, and we kind of stayed in touch and have been following each other's journeys over the last couple of years. So thanks for coming, Adrian. Thanks for having me. It's been a while, and yeah, we've been going back and forth trying to set dates, but Maybe that's a good thing because we're both so busy and trying to coordinate our calendars. But here we are. And yeah, thank, thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, amazing. I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and uh, how you're serving the world right now. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm obviously a real estate investor. Um, I started real estate investing about 13 years ago, and I was a police officer um, working in the GTA. And um, all the while, I thought when I retire from the police force, how am I going to live on a reduced income because I'm going to be on my pension? And how can I live the same lifestyle, if not a better lifestyle, um, when I retire and I put in my 30 years on the job, so to speak? And I thought of real estate investing. So I'll fast forward. Obviously, um, we started, I say we, my wife and I started by um, purchasing a couple of small uh, duplexes while I was still a cop in the GTA. And things went well. Again, this started 13 years ago. Things went well all around. And ultimately, we started to joint venture partner with a lot of different investors and those investments um, in joint venture partnership and our own all pretty much multifamily um, led me to retire early from the police force. So I left police force after completing 21 years of service. So essentially I retired nine years early. Being a full-time real estate investor, um, I started a group of companies to really work at a high level in the multifamily space with partnerships. So we have uh, our own construction company, we have our own property management company, and um, essentially like a Costco, a full service real estate investing team uh, to work at a high level in the multifamily space. Yeah, that's the last 13 years of, of my life. Uh, I know you are always, uh, or at least my perspective is that there, you have so much on the go. When you say the words group of companies, I mean, that says a lot of how busy you are, how many skill sets you need to have, how many teams you need to have. Uh, which company would you say takes most of your time? Property management takes a lot of time. Um there's so many moving parts and when you have a large portfolio that you manage um there's always something going on in, in that respect you're absolutely right i i am very very busy but um you know overall when you really like what you do and you meet people in this space like yourself and we were just talking about that you know it's, it's a small world in this commercial space and you like what you do it um, it's a different kind of work, right? And you can appreciate that. Yeah, hundred percent. What would you say were the top learning lessons for you in twenty twenty three? So my daughter works for us now, and um, really trying. It was a challenge. Uh, so she's twenty three, and she does a lot of the stuff behind the scenes with me, um, and really learning the business. And um, we work our butts off. Uh, one thing that was a challenge to learn was how to separate um, work from home. It's great to work with your child every day in a professional setting, but you have to learn, and it was quite difficult, how to turn it off. 
So when we get home, it's daddy daughter and it's not what it is at the office. And, you know, probably the first better part of the first, even into the second quarter of 2023, that was a big challenge how to just turn it off and not talk about work. And let's just be, I'm your dad and you're my little girl. Uh, so that was really challenging. Um, we, we, we definitely, we definitely got there slowly, but surely, but there was a lot of, you know, hills to climb and, you know, it's, it's inevitable. You still have little fights or little arguments shit happens at work and you kind of bicker about it and then you we drive home it's like we're a married couple <laughs> and we drive home and me and my daughter in the car driving home and then we get home she still lives at home granted she's 23 she's probably going to leave soon but so it's kind of like being with your wife 24 7 um so that was a big learning curve as well that was one of my questions for you because I got to meet your daughter, uh, I don't know, last year sometime uh, or a couple of years ago now. And she was just getting started. Uh, she was very excited. And she's like, just yeah. I could tell I had a really quick conversation with her, but I could tell how much she looked up to you and was really excited to like kind of learn the family business. Uh, as business owners and entrepreneurs, I think a lot of us have this vision in our minds that, you know, we, it would be a blessing to pass it off to our kids someday and let them like take it and run with it. Uh, my kids are still small. They're 10 and eight. So I'm, I'm yeah. far from that. I've been trying to get my, my daughter to like, um, like uh, help me with receipts and things and she's just not interested not like no <laughs> did she show interest in it or were you the one that were like hey you should come and you should try this yeah. out and you should intern it's funny you say that because <clears throat> i wanted her uh even before she started university i was the guy we only have the one child so you know all of our properties and our businesses and whatnot um, essentially it's, it's all hers, um, so to speak. So I was the guy that before she went to university, I said, you know, Hey, like, I don't have anything against school. It's great. Um, but I just said, Hey, like rather than going to university for five years, like come and learn the business and take over the business. Cause eventually it's all yours regardless. So, you know, and, um, back then, Five years ago, she's at a high school. She says she had zero interest. Okay, fine. So we send her off. She goes to university. And uh, she's wrapping up her last year. And she actually came back to me. And she's like, um, don't say I told you so, but I'm ready to learn the business. And I really want it's now she came. She wanted to do it as opposed to me forcing it which was gratifying and yet I knew it was the right time then because it wasn't me. It was her saying, I want to do this now. This is my decision. I love that because at the end of the day, we both know you can't really force your kids to do that much that they don't want to do. So I worked with my husband very closely for many years in the construction business and it nearly killed me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> It was so hard. Yeah. A huge, a huge reason was what you said. It's so hard to turn it off. Like we, in, in our case, we didn't even have an office. So we're kind of working from home and living together. And then like by the time dinner time come along, there's nothing else that we know to talk about other than what we've been doing all day. So it felt like I was always at work, no matter what time of the day was. And I just couldn't do it anymore. It actually was beginning of COVID when I made a decision to let him deal with that business and go start something new. That little separation, it, it, it does, it, it, it's, it's healthy to have. Uh, and that's why, like I said, you hit the nail on the head. And that question, I was, I'm, it's kind of funny how you asked that question because it's totally was something that we needed to work on, myself and my daughter in 2023 because it got to a point where i didn't feel like daddy daughter at all even on a weekend it's kind of like I, and i miss that you know so you really have to we had to really kind of focus on that because you could talk about work 24 7 
yeah. right? Especially when you're obviously, you know, an entrepreneur and running your own business, whether it's straight construction or it's just straight acquisitions and multifamily, whatever it is, you could talk about that, you, you, you know, 24 seven. So you hit the nail on the head for sure. What are you, what are your big um, goals for 2024? Or give me like one or two things that you're hoping to focus on in 2024. It's kind of like a personal, um, it's kind of like a personal, I guess, um, thing that I have. I want to hit 500 doors. Not that I need it, um, but I want to, I, I don't know, it's just kind of like a personal challenge. I want to hit 500 doors. That's a big achievement for me. Um, and I want another real big personal goal. If I do that in itself, I've achieved what I want to do this year. Um, and I'm, I know we can do, I know I can do it. I know we can do it. I say me and my daughter, and then I want to groom her to take over. And there's a lot of, in our group of companies, there's a lot of different moving parts. There's a lot of, you know, team members that have to be uh, accounted for and, and, and part of this whole organization of companies. So I want to really focus then on grooming her to take over so I can take a step back. Um, I, I really worked really hard the last decade, you know, to where we are today. So I'd love to take a step back, maybe be a snowbird, you know, starting next year, maybe be a snowbird and still help her work off the laptop, still help her give her the right advice, but not be so physically involved. Uh, where would you go? I'd love to get a nice place down in uh, Naples, Florida. Yeah, it's beautiful down there. It's um, very, um, well, obviously it's warm, but um, just the the whole, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of money in Naples. Um, it's a little on the pricey side, but um, it's a place that um, is so uh, wealthy, but yet, clean and beautiful and uh somewhere i could see myself going for the next 20 years being a snowbird and just relax you know um but yeah that would be my two big goals for this this year i love it uh i'm excited to see how it goes i kind of look forward to 2025 january and getting it back on the podcast and hearing how it went yeah maybe we can do the podcast january 2025 and i'll be down in florida how about i'll be down with you even better i even florida better. is one of my big uh i spent a lot of time there last year like a lot of time went as often oh, as yes. i could we actually spent some time in Naples. It was, it's just so gorgeous. It's just like, it's an aspiration to look around. Like I can see myself here. Oh yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I, I also enjoyed Miami quite a bit. Uh, it's more the hustle and bustle business yeah. and, you know, people to me, a lot of money there too. Um, so, but that is definitely one of our goals. I want to ask you, what would you say are the top like two Ad advice or tips you would give to business owners and entrepreneurs out there? Well, I don't know if this is the right saying, but if you can dream it, most of the time you can achieve it. Um, and I used to dream of being an entrepreneur while I was a police officer once upon a time, but I never really took it seriously. And I just kind of, yeah, it'd be nice to, you know, be, Mm -hmm. uh, successful with uh, my own companies and my own people and everything like that. All the while I was a police officer and I loved being a police officer. I really, really did. But um, I thought I didn't really pay that much attention to it until things started to go well with me in real estate. But I always thought about it. And now fast forward 13 years, we own a group of companies um, that are doing well and have a bunch of people that work for us, with us. 
Um, never in my wildest dreams that I ever thought that I would actually, that that dream would come true to the extent that it has today. Never, never. So it is doable if you can dream it and you work your ass off and, and obviously surround yourself with the right people, have the right mentors, the right coaches, the right, you know, well, everything else I'm looking for. It is possible. It is really, really possible. Um, and secondly, um, don't be afraid to fail. Um, and I think I learned that too from um, the police department of not being afraid. There'd be situations that I got involved in while I was a police officer that I didn't really have a choice. It was just part of my job. I had to do it. And, and we pushed forward and, you know, you didn't have a choice to not be afraid to fail because you had to go to that bank robbery and arrest that guy. You just, you had to do that. That was your job. You couldn't just put up your hand and say, I'm a little scared. I'm not going to do that today. Um, so, pushing myself and now taking that into this context, pushing myself and not being afraid to fail. Like, Hey, I, I really haven't done that, but I've done the right research. I'm got some good people in my corner. I don't really know how the, you know, how this is going to turn out, but I'm going to do it because I, I want to achieve that goal. And if I fail, I'm going to fail forward and I'm going to get up and I'm going to learn from my mistake. And I'm going to get it right the next time. And we're going to build from that and build from that and be successful. And, you know, we haven't talked about, nobody ever talks about all the times they fail. They always say, oh, look at me. And I got all this shit. Nobody sees uh, all the times you fail to get all that stuff. Um, but I failed a lot learning in these group of companies that I built, I failed a lot, but yet I failed. What's that saying? I failed forward and I learned from it and I built from it and it made me that more successful as I kept going. It's not over when you fail. It's over when you quit. So don't quit. Actually, that was a picture I have hanging up in my office at home. It's not over when you fail. It's over when you quit. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love that. That's actually one of the values that I hold near and close to me, as you can imagine. As entrepreneurs, we don't have an option. Uh, when I first did my first, very first deal in real estate, I didn't know a lot. <laughs> you know, I had some education. I had a coach, but I didn't know much. But that was my that was my mindset. I'm like, if this fails miserably and we lose all of our money or whatever, um, I'm just gonna learn from it and I'm gonna go do it again. You know, and that like that really allows you to keep moving. Uh, so I can relate really well with that. There's um, so many people I've met in this industry of real estate investing. I shouldn't say so many. I should say maybe three to six. Okay, like. A handful of people I've met in this industry that have actually gone bankrupt and then built it all back up to another empire of, you know, rental properties. You know, I have so much respect for that. It's like going bankrupt and starting all over again and then being just as successful, if not more, the second time around. Like, can you imagine what that takes? <laughs> like that's that's incredible and i have so much respect so much respect for those people that okay they failed whatever things didn't go right for one reason or another but now they've come back that much better that much stronger and i've done it all over again and maybe even better the second time around and i've met at least a handful of people in this industry that have been able to achieve that level of success so that's incredible as far as i'm concerned it also so it, it also tells you a couple of personality traits that person has like you have to be willing to self reflect and be um, self aware enough to be like hey like what's going on in here every time I notice I am stuck or I reach a plateau or I'm facing something that I'm like I don't know how to like deal with the situation 
I realize there's something within me that needs to level up, that needs to evolve into something else. I need to look within and say, am I missing? Is it a skill set? Is it a belief system? Is it a fear? Like what is going on within here that I need to address, that I need to look into, that I need to examine and reflect on uh, so that I can like keep moving forward? We right. tend to, a lot of people tend to look exterior to themselves. Or oh, it's this person's fault, or it's the market, or it's the, you know, the broker, or it's, you know, and you're not really taking enough of a chance, even if it is partially the broker or the market or the interest rates, because all of those do impact. Um, that can be the, the, the thing that's holding you back. It's looking within and like, how do I, what do I need to do here uh, to pivot and keep growing and learn from this? Yeah, because if you just stay stagnant and use all those excuses together, oh, the market, oh, the rates, oh, the, yeah, you have a great point. Those are all good points. It's not going to change your your success, though, if you, all you do is complain about it. Like, it'll always be there. You'll always have those excuses. You're always going to have those excuses. Those excuses and complaining about them aren't going to make you successful. Exactly. My last question that I ask all my guests is, uh, if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what message would you share with everybody? And that's a lot less than 30 seconds. But I, and I like to say that when I present to at different venues, just really, I came from nothing. And um, I don't have any business background. I was a police officer. I didn't go to business school. I don't have a business education. Um, I had a police foundations education, and yet I've managed to, um, you know, build this, whatever you want to call it, that I've built um, over the course, relatively quickly, over the course of 13 years, um, with no education in that regard at all, other than other than learning as I went myself. So again, I say to everybody as an inspiration, because I'd love to see everybody succeed. If I can do it, you can do it. I love that. Thank you so much, Adrian. It's been such a pleasure. Where can people find you? Uh, all over social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, our company's generational wealth. Um, .ca um, generation on Instagram or generational wealth creators uh, or just my name Adrian um, Panozo on all social media platforms um, is the best way we're, we're very searchable best way to find us amazing thank you for your time if you enjoy this type of content tips and tricks to grow your real estate business entrepreneur personal life and much more please make sure to subscribe share and like this video thank you for coming adrian and i'm sure we'll be in touch very soon yeah thank oh, you wait, 2025 in naples we said yes florida trip 100 <laughs>